This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hey there, everyone, and welcome to In Rage, episode number 32. I'm Cameron Harris, and lately I've been getting a lot of emails about people asking me questions about insulin pumps. So today I thought I'd take the time to answer some of those questions. First up is Jason, and he asks, how long do pumps usually last? How often do you replace them? Uh, that's a good question. I've never had a pump actually just completely fail on me. Uh, if it does happen, then the company that makes the pump will usually send you a replacement free of charge. In fact, they should. Um, as far as actually like, like replacing a pump, typically you get a new pump model every four years. And that's because most pumps come with a four-year warranty, during which time you're covered if anything goes wrong. The company will like overnight you a new pump, fix it, do whatever it takes to make sure that that pump still works for you. Once that four-year period is up, though, you're on your own, which is not good. If something goes wrong, you want to have that warranty to fall back on. So after four years, you'd usually get a new pump with a new warranty. Could be from the same company, could be from a different company, it doesn't really matter then you're covered for the next four years. Also, keep in mind, your insurance company probably won't uh, cover you for a new pump if your current pump is still under warranty. So you do typically stick with a pump for four years, then you upgrade. Next up, we have Mike, who says, we're concerned about the pump sites becoming infected. Is that common? Uh, well, it's true that if you leave a pump site and cannula in you too long, it will get infected. I mean, it is, after all, a hole in you, in essence. Um, but that's why they have you swap out the sites and change the positioning of them every three days. It's to avoid infection. So as long as you stick to that schedule, it shouldn't be in you long enough to cause any kind of problem. Also, this is something that I do. I treat all of my sites, my old sites, uh, with Neosporin, which is an antibiotic ointment. That kind of helps drive away infection. It also helps the sites heal much faster, too. So. Long story short, I've never had the infections be a big problem. The next question comes from Heather, who says, I do a lot of swimming. Would wearing a pump conflict with that? Um, well, that depends. Some pump models are completely waterproof. You can swim with them all you want, no problem. But a lot of pumps are just water resistant which basically means they're resistant to things like um, raindrops, you know, if you get caught in a rainstorm or, you know, shallow water, but swimming is a little bit of a no-no with that. Look in your pump's manual or call up the company and ask them specifically, can I swim with this? If you can, that's great. Uh, personally, my pump is not waterproof, so when I go swimming, this is what I do. Uh, I disconnect from my pump, leave it at the lounge chair or whatever, go swimming, and set a timer for half an hour. Half an hour is as long as I'm comfortable being disconnected from my pump for. So I go swimming, timer goes off, it's been half an hour. I go back to the pump and reconnect for another half hour just to get some more insulin in me. Maybe I'll have a snack and bowls for that to get a little boost of insulin. Uh, and then once that half hour is up, I can go back in for another half hour. Come back, reconnect for another half hour, go back in, repeat the cycle until you're done swimming. Also, if you're having trouble with your going low uh, while you're swimming, watch our episode uh, on exercise. I talk about swimming specifically in there because it's such a, you know, a physical sport. You're moving literally every muscle in your body when you're swimming. That'll cause you to burn up the carbs pretty quickly. So watch that episode if you're having problems going low. And next up is Anthony, who says, one of my problems with my pump is the tubing keeps getting caught on things as I walk by. Is there any way to fix this? Anthony, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm very familiar with the tubing snag. You're walking down a hallway and you keep opening doors as you're going. Yeah, not, not really fun. Here's what I did to solve this problem. I used to wear my pump, I, I, I always wear my pump on my belt in a little holster. I used to wear my pump on my right side. And when I did that, the tubing part was sticking straight out in front. And as such, it was creating like a little loop, right? loops are, and it was like a lasso. I was just snagging onto anything and everything as I walked by. What I did a few weeks ago is I switched it to my left side. As such, the tubing is, is pointing in back of me. And now there's no loop. 
it just goes, you know, just ends. There's no loop at all. So now no loop, no possibility for snagging. So try that out and see if that helps. And lastly, we have Leslie who says, I've seen some pumps that can pair with continuous glucose sensors. Is it worth choosing a pump that supports that? Now, continuous glucose sensors, for those of you who don't know, are a relatively new technology. They're actually, they look kind of like an insulin pump site. It's a separate um, unit. And they basically have a little sensor that goes under the skin and is constantly checking your glucose and sending it to either a meter or, in some cases, there are pumps that will actually pair with uh, the sensor and work kind of as one cohesive unit. Uh, if that sounds good to you, if you don't mind having an extra, you know, something on your, you know, stomach, by all means, you know, go for a pump that supports it. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind. One is that your insurance company may not cover the actual sensor hardware. You do need to get new sensors. I think every week you need to swap it out. Uh, and be so because it's a new technology, you may have to buy those out of pocket. Also keep in mind that it won't replace, you know, old school finger testing. Because the technology is still pretty new, it's not accurate enough to replace it. It might be, you know, 20 to 50 units off. I mean, it really kind of depends on what model you go with, your body type, how often you calibrate it. So bottom line, it won't replace this. But a lot of people really like them for uh, testing for trends or getting alerts. It's like, okay, we think you're going a little bit high now. or We think you're going a little bit low now. So that can be pretty nice. Now, I really want to thank everyone who sent in questions. It's been a blast answering them and helping you guys out. Until next time, be sure to visit our website at www.harwoodpodcast.com. You can watch all of our previous episodes there, check out the show notes, all kinds of great stuff. And if you have any questions or comments for me, maybe a question for our next Q&A episode, you can send me an email at cameron at harwoodpodcast.com. I would absolutely love to hear from you guys. I'll catch you guys later. Good luck staying in range.